Good morning, everybody. Hello and welcome to this session of Get Digital. I'm Aileen McGloin. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications at Safe Food, the all island body responsible for promoting food safety and healthy eating. And I'm delighted to be your MC this morning. Throughout the week at Get Digital, we'll be exploring a range of topics related to business, leadership and entrepreneurship with a particular focus on how businesses at any stage and any size can harness the transformational digital technologies to achieve their business goals. For this session, I'm really pleased to introduce our speaker, Gary Fox. He's the host of the Entrepreneur Experiment and he'll be talking about the power of podcasts. For your part, we'd love you to get involved as much as possible and ask loads of questions. We have about 15 or 20 minutes at the end of the session, and you can ask uh, questions by using the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. So that's not the chat, the chat is disabled, it's the Q&A function. Gary will try to get to as many questions as he can. And so without any further delay, I'll hand you over to Gary. Looking forward to hearing it, Gary. Thank you very much, Aileen. Thank you for that lovely introduction. I'm just going to start my screen share now in two seconds. So we should be live now if everyone can see that. So that should be fine. Can you just confirm that, Aileen, if that's OK? Yes, I can see. I can see your slides. We've gone back to um, yeah. gone back to the gallery view. Yeah, that's perfect. So I'm okay. just going to kick off now once we have started. That's perfect. OK, thank you. Thank you, Eileen. So I'm going to talk about the power of podcasts. So how to create, produce and grow a podcast in 2021. It's, it's a very big topic and I probably could have done 30 to 40 minutes on each one. So I would advise you to get involved in the Q&A because that's where the real value will come from, is that when you can ask specific questions for yourself, because there's a lot to it. OK, podcasts are, are quite a big medium. So I'm going to give you an overview, a direct overview of everything. And it's all going to be related to my own journey. So because I think that's how I learn best. And I think that's how other people learn best is through stories. So I'm going to give you how I created my own how you can create your own, how to produce it. So my weekly schedule of how I produce two episodes a week, every single week, and how I've grown it from zero to years ago to over 130,000 downloads this morning. So we'll kick off. So who I am, I'm Gary Fox, as Aileen mentioned, and I run the Entrepreneur Experiment podcast. I also run a number of businesses. So this kind of blends into the passion, which I'll talk about later. So the Entrepreneur Experiment was started to two years ago, two years ago, thir three, day, three months ago. So what it is, is that I started as a way to be curious. I found I got very blinkered as an entrepreneur. And as an entrepreneur, you have to be so focused on what you're doing. And sometimes that can actually hamper you in the long run. So I've been running my business for four months, four years at that time. And I just found I was getting very siloed in what I was doing. And I was only thinking about ideas in my own space. And I suppose essentially I'd hit a personal ceiling. I'm very big on always trying to be learning and pushing. And I was consuming a huge amount of podcasts. I was consuming podcasts daily. And I found a lot of it was very American focused. A lot of it was very focused towards the States. And I just couldn't relate. I couldn't, couldn't see myself in, in their shoes. You know, I couldn't imagine, you know, these companies were launching and nine months later, closing a seed round for 500 million. That essentially meant nothing to me. So I wanted more content. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yes. We actually can't see your slides. Okay, that's fine. I'm glad you told me now. So let me just see. There we go. That should work now. Is that better? Perfect. Thanks so much. Thanks for thanks, Molly. So you missed nothing. I just missed the, the intro slide of, of the power of podcasts. So I'm just explaining who I am, the Entrepreneur Experiment Podcast. This is my logo. Um, and I'm just explaining why I started it. And essentially, I wanted mentors. I was craving Irish content that was relevant to me. And I wanted to get out and create mentors for myself. And I thought the best way to do that was through a podcast. Because essentially, then I'm creating value for the person I'm going to meet. And I'm going to create value for myself that it also might be useful to others. So what I did was I created the Entrepreneur Experiment podcast. So what that was, I'm just going to move slides. We became quite quite quickly um, the number one independent business podcast in Ireland. And what that means is, 
you're up against the big boys in the States, you're up against Tim Ferriss, all the lads. Um, so it, it's quite difficult to crack into that ceiling. But slowly but surely, we started inching up towards, you know, top 50, top 40, top 10. And eventually, four weeks ago, we hit the number one spot in Ireland overall in the entire business category. So I'm going to break that down for you today, because that can seem very unattainable when you start. It's like when you start anything, it seems really, really unattainable. So you can see here, we've done 116 episodes, 121,000 downloads. I think that was two weeks ago. And our target is 20,000 downloads per month this year. And I break that down because it shows you what kind of is involved in the numbers. And I'm going to talk about this a lot in terms of the numbers and the consistency it takes to actually run a podcast and break through. So I'll talk to you about this from a, from a personal level and also blend it into business because a lot of you might be watching going, okay, this is great. I don't want to start a personal podcast, but I'd love to start a business podcast. And I think there's a lot of secret sauce there that can be unlocked because I think there's massive potential for business. I said this to someone recently, they're like, oh, but I've got a business. I, sh I definitely would, it wouldn't be interesting to start a podcast. And I was like, well, if you don't tell your story, someone else will. Eventually someone will have to tell your story and the better you get at it and the more consistent and it's such a long medium, you get incredible scope to explore big issues. A lot of companies release a press release and then that's the last you hear from them for maybe six to 12 months. So I'll break all that down for you today. So what is it? It's a weekly podcast. So start off as, as is a diary style. And I was going to just reveal my business journey as I, as I ran my own business. And slowly it evolved into a weekly interview with some of Ireland's best entrepreneurs. And I say most interesting because I don't quantify success in terms of, oh, they had a big raise or, oh, they're 100 million sales. Often there's, Ireland is full of really incredible entrepreneurs and success can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. If there's a one-man band turning over 200 grand a year to them, and to most people, that is an incredible success. So I look for interesting stories as opposed to, you know, big name successes. I felt there was a lot of people um, just talking to the same entrepreneurs over and over and over again. And I felt there was a massive untapped resource there for entrepreneurs all over Ireland to actually tell their story. So I then launched a second one almost a year ago because I noticed in March last year, we all know what happened in March last year. I noticed in my head, I thought, wow. Everything's going to skyrocket now. I'm going to be the downloads. I'm going to hit a million probably by the summer. And they went off a cliff. They just crashed. So March, we were going up, 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 up. And then you could just see the daily downloads drop. And I was like, what is going on? Because I, it was getting better and better in my head. I was getting better guests. It was, I was getting better at presenting. And it just went off a cliff. And eventually a friend of mine asked me, are you still doing the podcast? And I was like, yeah, you're not listening anymore. He goes, I don't commute anymore. And I was like, oh, that's, and then I went and I did a straw poll survey of maybe 20 or 30 people that I knew. And I was like, you listen to podcasts? Mm, you know what? Not since I stopped commuting. My commute is now coming downstairs, hit the coffee machine, go from the coffee machine to my table, bedroom, front room, whatever it is for the new office. So I noticed the downloads dropped massively. So I used the Idea Lab. So on a Monday, I released an Idea Lab, which is essentially me just sharing trends, cool content that I've seen for other entrepreneurs, and increasingly my own story. Um, I shared one called The Worst Year of My Life a few weeks ago, just about how incredibly tough the last year has been for me personally, because I felt a lot of people were talking about, you know, oh, it's so tough, it's so tough. But again, you only listen and you only understand other people's stories when they actually share openly. So that, that has become increasingly where I'm focusing on in terms of sharing my own story. Why I launched the idea lab though, was to hook people in, get that short content, you know, 10 minutes is a very manageable time to just sit and listen to a podcast. And then I use that as feeder content into my main podcast on a Thursday. So if you are starting a podcast, think about what format it's going to take, because that will be very, very important. How you, break it down to attract new listeners because it's quite daunting to listen to a podcast for an hour for the first time, unless someone sends it to you. I'll talk about more of that later. And then the idea in lab newsletter goes out every Monday. Again, I'm trying to spread it across multiple formats so that I'm never overly reliant on one single avenue to attract new listeners and to also add value to existing listeners. So I've built a whole community around this. Now we have a whole private community I'm just continually trying to go deeper and deeper and deeper and multi-purpose the content. So if you're doing a podcast, you're going to create maybe 30 to 60 minutes of content. There is enormous, enormous value in that. 
And what you need to do and get good at is breaking that down into manageable chunks. So how do you repurpose that then for LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram? How do you make it accessible to people so that maybe if someone isn't into your podcast, how do they see a little quote or a little feature on a guest that then they can use? And then this year we're moving more towards YouTube because as we all know, it's one of the most powerful search engines in the world. So who's been on? Just to give you a flavor of the kind of people that I talk to, we've had kind of a, a blend. So I try to get a mix of everyone from different industries, different sectors, different interests, different ages, a blend of everybody. I don't really care who they are, where they're from, just as long as their story is very interesting and they're very open and willing to share. So you can see here, Devin Hughes, Jamie Heaslip, Pamela Laird, Mark Little, Thomas Arnold, the founder of The Go House. Their story is absolutely incredible. Paul Galvin, Hannah Moore, and Sonia DC. So after this, go and listen to a couple of these episodes of these people because they're just, their stories are absolutely incredible. And they might be entrepreneurs you might possibly not have heard of yet. So what can you expect today? What am I going to run through? I've touched on this a little bit earlier, just to give you a clear roadmap of what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the creation stages, how to actually come up with a podcast idea, how to flesh that out. Should you do it? Should you not? Is a podcast for you? Is it not? So if you are considering, if you're watching this with the intention of, Yes, I would like to launch a podcast. Well, this, that's going to be bang on for you. I'll show you the production schedule, how I manage all my interviews, how I record the equipment I use. You can actually see some of it here. This is a Roadcaster setup going back directly into our main Roadcaster body here, but you can start very soon, cheaply and simply. And then we're going to talk about promotion, the important part. And this, this, these lessons will apply a little to business as well. How to get your first 100,000 and 100,000 listeners because... That's the key. Okay. Podcasts are great, but you also want to be making sure you're reaching people. And then if you stay to the very end, I'm going to reveal the secret sauce of how all this comes together. So this is just me giving you kind of a quick overview of podcasts. Maybe you're familiar, maybe you're not. So there's 850,000 active podcasts in the world, which sounds like a lot on its own, but then you compare it to other mediums. So a lot of people are focusing on, oh, I'm going to focus a lot of my business on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or blogs. Remember those? They're still around. So 31 million YouTube channels, 689 million TikTok accounts, 1 billion Instagram accounts, and 500 million blogs. If you go back over to how many active podcasts there are in the world, that's not a lot. That's not a lot at all. Podcast is still in the very, very, very early stages. So a lot of people will say to me, oh, I'd love to start a podcast, but yeah, you were so ahead of the curve two years ago. I was a little bit ahead of the curve, but in real terms, two years is nothing. It goes by in a flash and we're still at the infancy stages because tons of people have contacted me going, oh, I'm going to start a podcast. Good stuff. They either never do or do one episode. And then that's the difference. If you start it, the consistency is going to be the key. Podcast revenues are expected to hit 1 billion in 2021. That's pretty small. Been honest in terms in terms of how you look at other other. Other avenues, the things we looked at there, TikTok, Instagram, it's still very young. Like the revenues have grown exponentially in the last couple of years, but it's still a very young medium. And it's still a medium whereby you can get ex exceptional value. So I'll look at this from two different points. I look at this from the advertiser point of view. I look at this from the creator point of view. So we're all kind of familiar with YouTube stars who make 20, 30, 40 million a year podcasters, with the exception of Tim Ferriss, Joe Rogan. They're not making that. It's still very young and it's still a very early stage to get in with. This is good from a creator point of view. As I talked about, there's still plenty of scope to grow and go in and make a footprint very quickly. As also scope, if you're a business, podcasts are a massively untapped medium. So if you're watching this and you have a business and you're thinking of all your different little marketing channels, I would look at podcasts because that's just not me going, oh, you should definitely go on a podcast, but it's, it's, a hugely immersive medium. And I'll talk about this as we go through the relationship between a podcast and the listener is very deep as you're cr creating a, a long-term relationship over an hour every single week. And that's, that's a huge connection. I have people send me messages and chat to me like they know me. I'll, I'll never have met any of these people, but they talk to me about, Oh, glad things are going like this for you. Or, Oh, it's cool. You did that. And I'm really excited when you're going to do this. And it's incredible. So it's, it's a medium that is so, so immersive and builds a very deep personal connection. And in the world of TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, where you're literally 
a swipe away from the next thing, a swipe, a swipe, a swipe. With podcasts, you're in someone's head essentially for an hour a week. That's a huge amount of time. 65% of podcast listeners tune in on phones or tablets. Nothing too shocking here. I just wanted to remind you as when you're creating your podcast to have that in mind, have that, where are they going to listen? How are they going to listen? And how are they going to interact with your podcast? Because that's very important. And it's something, to be honest, I, I, I slept on this for a long time. I didn't wake up to the interaction point of view. I couldn't bridge that gap because generally you're listening in a set of headphones, you're out for a walk, or you're driving your car. And I found it very difficult to get people to interact. So build interactivity into your podcast. So I've done a couple of different things. So I've launched the community, which sits underneath the podcast now, and people can join that and become part of it, like a wider community. As I mentioned earlier, I also do the newsletter, which people can literally just write back to. And we've started getting better at social and starting putting more of our episodes out on social and breaking it down. So if you are going to start a podcast, think about how you're going to interact with your audience because that personal connection they will feel like they know you intimately it's for up to you then to figure out well, how do you get to know them intimately because it's only since i started doing that that i truly think i've made the podcast a lot better and i thought about it from a different level creation let's get involved in the first section of how we're actually going to create your podcast so the coffee test if we were sitting in the helix in dc right now and we went outside and had a coffee what would me and you talk about? What would be the thing you could talk to me about like that for 30 minutes without even thinking? What is the thing that engages you, that, that you love, that brings a smile to your face? If you have to prep massively for a podcast every single week, and I keep saying weekly because like that's the cadence you need to be putting these out at, you're not going to do it, very honestly, because I'll break down the hours and minutes involved later, but if you have to spend an excessive amount of time each week preparing, writing, scripting your podcast, it's not going to happen. So be careful what you pick. It can become a prison of your own making. Make sure you're passionate about it. It's giving you something back. For me, I get free mentorship every single week from Ireland's best entrepreneurs. I, honestly, I can't think of anything better. Like there's no money you could pay to get that because it's just, it's just not done. So I created my own little mentorship every single week. That's what I get from it. And why do you want to do the podcast? Is it for personal reasons? Do you just want to become a better presenter, a better communicator? Is it you're so passionate about a single topic? Um, a person works with me and they're so passionate about Tesla and we're now helping him create his own podcast just about Tesla. And I love that because I think it's such a niche topic and he loves it. There's no real difficulty to him. So think about why. If you're a business, think about why. What's the reason? Are you to tell your own business story, to connect with other businesses, to become a thought leader? What is the reason? Put a lot of thought into these two areas before you do anything. I thought I had to go and create this meme yesterday, but it's absolutely everywhere. The joke during lockdown is I managed to make it the whole way through lockdown without starting my own podcast. And that's the kind of common misconception about podcasts. And I talked about this earlier already, but I wanted to bring it back up to you again. If you think you've missed the podcast boat, you haven't. Even the fact that you're sitting here watching this talk shows that you're ahead of the game when it comes to podcasts. You're thinking about it. You're thinking about how it should be done. So you haven't missed the boat. So why is it exploding? Why is it getting so popular? Traditional media is crumbling. Newspaper and TV, the trust is gone. People don't trust newspapers. They don't trust, as we've seen from the recent protests, they don't trust big media anymore. There's very low barriers to entry, very low costs and little equipment. I'm going to show you this now in a couple of minutes. I'll give you the full little blueprint you need to start your own podcast. I've talked about this already, a deeply immersive medium, deep, long form content, and very few mediums exist that you can now consume passively. You know, with Instagram, you're, you're kind of there and you're, 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 you're flicking around. There's very few mediums where you're sitting, thinking, consuming the media passively. And then it's as simple as this in bud in your ear, earbuds have resulted in massive consumption. If you notice the trend between podcasts and new forms of headphones have been developed and new forms of phones have been developed, the two go hand in hand. So there's other underlying factors that are helping to grow podcasts. The production, 
I want to spend a little bit of time on this because it is important. Very low barriers to entry for the production. There's very few elements you need, but you need to do them very well. This is my production blueprint. This is how I produce my weekly podcast every single week. Now, obviously, there's more to it. We only have 30 to 40 minutes here to blast through everything. So I wanted to give you a quick overview. If you have questions afterwards, ask me to just note them down now and ask me direct questions about any of this or any of the presentations we go along. So pre-production. So as I said already, my podcast is a weekly interview podcast that involves having guests every single week. So there's a little bit to that. Contact the guest, arrange the interview, arrange the time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I wanted to break this down for you to show you that there is a little bit of time involved. So you do have to commit. I was trying to work this out earlier, how long it takes me each week. It varies, but I would imagine about three to four hours per week to produce one hour of content, which is very good. You consider, I used to write long blog posts and I've, I've done video content and they are 10X or 20X more intensive than doing a podcast. Now, this is also because I've been doing it for so long that I'm able to, I know the tricks and I know how to do a good audio interview almost in one take. So you have the pre-production, you have the recording, which is the live interview. So generally how our podcast worked is that I'd go and meet the person. We'd set up a little studio or they'd come into my studio in Temple Bar and we'd chat for an hour. Now we do it via Zoom and other methods. Still takes about 45 to 60 minutes. So we record the audio file, the ed editing. So I used to do all the editing myself, cutting out all the, mm, uh, well, I think cutting out all that because if you're only listening for an hour, that gets really repetitive very quickly and you do become very conscious of your verbal tics and your repetition words. So it does need to be edited and cleaned up. The audio might need to be raised or lowered a little bit, maybe remove some kind of background sounds and things like that. So my editor does that. I send over the audio file to him. He cleans the audio, do the intro and the outro. What I mean by that is, hey, welcome to episode 115 of the Entrepreneur Experiment podcast with me, Gary Fox. Today's guest is blah. So there's a little bit to that as well. And then the episode goes live and that's when your promotion work starts. So we'll talk about that now in a couple of minutes. Cost to start. This is really good because when you think of any other medium, there's a huge cost to start. If you're going to look at video or anything like that, the cost to start on a podcast is essentially free. You can use your phone and the cheapest way to start is actually to get a lavalier mic. So if you're not familiar with a lavalier mic, it's a little clip on mic that goes onto your collar there. It's 13 euros off amazon.de. It'll go straight into your laptop. You can record directly into your laptop using the editing software at the bottom here, GarageBand or Audacity. And then you can record directly in. That's literally all you need. If you want to take it up a level, you can get something like I'm using here. This is a Rode microphone and you can just get a little boom arm or you can get a little desk stand for it. Blue Yeti or Rode, both incredible audio quality for around 150 euro. And they're USB mics. So you don't need, I have a production desk here on my right hand side. You don't actually need that, to be honest, when you're starting off. You just need a Blue Yeti or a Rode USB mic that goes directly into your laptop and then you record. Look, if I'm being honest, you should have one of them anyway. There's literally nothing worse than being on a Zoom call with someone and they're using the onboard mic or they're using those earphones to click in and out. It's a good investment either way. Headphones, I actually didn't do this for the first mm, 15, 20 episodes. It was a nightmare because I didn't pick up all the external sounds that were going around in the room. I had one person who was quite nervous and they were tapping the table like this. And obviously, I didn't notice because you can't, your, your brain kind of filters out certain sounds. And as I listened back then on the edit, all I could hear was just his fingers just tapping the table like that. Whereas you'll notice I always, when I'm doing a podcast or any presentation, I have headphones on. That's giving me a feedback into what I'm actually hearing, what you're hearing. Definitely a set of headphones. Hosting. So I'm going to show you how simple it is now. I, I asked, I've mentored a couple of people on how to start their own podcast. And I asked them all yesterday. I was like, look, I'm chatting to everyone in DCU tomorrow. What should I tell them? And what's the thing that you didn't know that you know now? And the thing was how simple it is. That was the one answer that came back is that it's actually so much easier than you think to get onto Spotify, to get onto Apple podcast. It's actually really simple. And the only thing you really need is to host your podcast somewhere. So I use a platform called Libsyn. I'll show you now in a second how that works. And then for editing, it's free. You can use GarageBand on Mac or Audacity on, if you're on a PC, both free bits of software. And they're absolutely perfect to edit your podcast on. 
So this is the podcast creation formula. I just talked about this, about Libsyn. So you have your raw audio file. So you'll record whatever the audio file is, 15 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever the audio file is. Very simple format, small size. You simply edit that, upload it to a platform like Libsyn. There's plenty of them. And essentially they all do the same thing. So don't worry too much if you don't use Libsyn. And Libsyn will then, once you create the feed once, that feed will automatically go out every week. Then once you upload your file, click publish. So I do this every Thursday or every Wednesday night, I should say. It goes live overnight. It takes about two to three hours, depending on how much stuff has been uploaded at one time for your podcast to go live. Sometimes it can go live immediately. So you can also set the time. So if you want to do a schedule, you can set the time. And that's literally all there is. That's the secret sauce of how do you create a podcast? How do you... How do you get it from your laptop to Spotify? And there's a credibility thing. Once you're on these platforms, people automatically think, yes, this is a real podcast. This is worth listening to. So it's very important to get yourself onto those platforms as quickly as possible. Promotion. I'm aware I'm going quite quickly, and that's why I want to leave quite a lot of time at the end for questions. So do get involved with any of the topics we've talked about so far. Promotion. And this is, I won't say it's the most important aspect, but it's the aspect that is probably the most difficult as it's beyond your control. You know, everything up to this point that I've brought you through so far is in your control. You can control all the controllables about, you know, creating it, producing it, and now it goes out in the big bad world. How do you get people to listen? I'm going to bring you through first hundred, first thousand, and hopefully first hundred thousand. This is the roadmap, essentially. And there's variabilities to this. You know, there's, it depends on what your topic is. It depends on your niche. It depends on a lot of things. But this is overall how I've seen my own and other podcasts grow. First 100 listeners, your network, social and real. No matter who you are, you have some sort of network established. You have some sort of social media presence. I would imagine if you're here, that alone will get you your first 100 listeners. And word of mouth will drive your first hundred and thousand listens. And the biggest thing I see people doing and not doing is talking about it. They're afraid to actually release their podcast. They're afraid they've done all the hard work. They've spent weeks, months, maybe preparing everything, getting it done. And then at the last minute, they're just held back by that fear of, of releasing it and making it public. And that, that, that will cripple you because if you're not willing to publish it yourself and get out to your first hundred, you'll lose the momentum of, of, of why you're doing it. Word of mouth. It's funny. I've tried so many different growth hacks, if you want to use that word. And word of mouth is the biggest growth hack of all. Having good content and asking people to share it. So I will do call to action in every podcast going, look, if you've enjoyed it, send it to one other person. Just send this to one other person you think might enjoy it or might benefit from it. Now, I'm kind of lucky in the fact that the guests I have on are just so good. They're so, so good. And we'll talk about that in a second for your first thousand listens. So your first hundred listens, I'm not going to say it's simple, but it's very, very attainable. And that'll give you the little push to then go, oh, this is going to be cool. I've got my first hundred listens. We'll now keep going. The first thousand listens. Okay, things are getting a little bit serious now. You're starting to get a bit of traction it's not just your mom and dad listening anymore. Your network and your wider network have now pushed that out. And what I mean by wider network, LinkedIn is an incredible growth tool for making it accessible to other people. It's probably the only social media platform that allows you to get any sort of organic reach at all. So do whatever podcast you're doing. For me, I'm pretty lucky. Mine is business, so I can use LinkedIn extensively. But your network and your wider network will get you the first hundred and probably to your first thousand. If you're doing interviews, that will be another great growth hack because your guests network. I'm not saying you pick guests based on their organic reach. That'd be a little bit too calculating, but ask your guests to share it. It's as simple as that. We're, we're often very hesitant in Ireland to actually say what we want. It's like, will you come on my podcast? Yes. Will you share the podcast? Yes. And it's as simple as going, look, podcast is going live on Thursday. Here is what it's going to be. Here's the link. I'd appreciate if you shared it. Tag them in social. And that will then give you, that'll get you out from beyond your own network into a whole new network. Just think of it in terms of networks and moving through different layers of networks all the time. 
another one to grow is appearing on other podcasts. That's a little bit more difficult and probably won't happen in the first couple of hundred listens, but, but just put yourself out there. There's a lot of great young people starting Irish podcasts now about business and about various things. So you can get on other networks and then get on other podcasts that will help you gain a little bit of credibility as well as a host publishing online. What I mean by that is just publishing it everywhere that you can in terms of LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and digging down into the value I talked about earlier in terms of if you're doing, even if you're doing 20 minutes of a podcast, like there's so many, there should be so many nuggets of information in there. You can now break out and make it more accessible to people. And then slowly over time, you can bring them into the podcast consistency. That's everything, to be honest, the consistency of publication. So if you say, I'm going to publish every Monday morning at 5 a.m. for the next 10 weeks, do that. People are very big creatures of habit, especially during COVID. I've noticed that I get messages off people on a Thursday morning if the podcast is not, and my podcast is tiny in relative terms. So do publish consistency. It's like anything. If you're, like, if you're doing any sort of enterprise at all, consistency will be the most important thing for growing your podcast above everything. And then your first thousand to 100,000 listeners. This is a little bit more work. Getting to a thousand, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's, it's doable. Getting to a hundred thousand will involve a lot more. Again, your network, wider network. Again, just keep doing the basics. Keep doing the fundamentals every single week and you'll slowly see the numbers creep up and up and up and up. I've consistency lined in red just because you didn't listen quite, quite clearly enough when I said it the last time. You'll notice consistency is the word I've used throughout this presentation. Consistency of publication. Any good podcast has a consistency of publication. You don't have to crank them out every single week, but if you're going to do a season, 10 weeks, every Monday, do 10 weeks every Monday, and then be very clear about when you're going to come back. People like to have a schedule and rely on it. So honestly, consistency will make or break your podcast. It's as simple as that. And then as you grow up through to the, to the charts, hopefully, as you, you know, it's, it's possible to get into the Irish top, top a hundred between a thousand and maybe 30,000 downloads. It's possible to break the hundred and then you'll, you should be breaking into in terms of real terms, I actually haven't studied this exactly, but I would imagine between eight to 10,000 downloads a month should get you into the top 20. So it's very achievable. You know, if you have, in Irish terms, if you get a reasonably small podcast, you can actually break in the top 20 quite quickly. Bigger names, bigger names will help you sell the podcast in two different ways. They'll help you get other bigger names and they'll help you just by people, people are more willing to take a chance on me as an unknown person. I don't know who Gary Fox is. I don't know what his podcast is about. Oh, he had Jamie Heaslip on. Okay, cool. That must be kind of interesting. And then the network effect will, will kick into action. And a little secret, don't tell anyone this one, how you get more great guests is you ask your previous guest. You go, hey, Pamela, can you recommend someone who should be on the podcast next? And this has twofold benefit. They don't want to recommend someone who's really poor and they don't want to recommend someone who's not going to do a good job because their name is tied to them. And it also gives you the social credibility with this person you do not know to go, oh, well, Pamela said Gary's podcast is quite good. I should probably check it out and possibly be a guest. So that's the key secret there is how you get better names, better names, and better names. Better quality audio. I invested in the mic you see in front of me here just before COVID because I was like, I'm going to double down on this. This is the only thing I can do during COVID. I'm going to double down on this. And it's allowed me to do things like this with you today. And I know I'm comfortable. Being comfortable, huge being being able to say you're not fidgeting around with like, oh, is, is my gun? Oh God, the software system working. Nightmares when I'm doing something with people and I'm like, oh God, is this recording? I can't go back and ask them again to record this. You don't want that stress. You can't see it here, but to my right is the production setup I use. There's a simple massive record button. I press that. It goes red. I know I am all good. So better quality equipment will allow you a little bit more comfort. It's not mandatory though when you're starting, so don't spend a lot of money. More style, substance, and authenticity. They're kind of intangibles, right? They, they're things I can't tell you about today and show you and teach you. That's something you'll just get over time. 
you will get more comfortable. You will get more into it. You'll go, you'll, you'll be able to see patterns between your guests going, okay, I know if I open this avenue, this is a closed route. This person is going to give me a yes or no answer here. This is not something they're comfortable with. You'll get better as an interviewer and you'll get better as a communicator. And that will give you more depth and authenticity. This is so important because if you're not your true self on the podcast, it'll come out so quickly and people will be unable to relate to you. Be your true self. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what people think. I use my podcast as a way of thinking through what I actually want to do about things and how I feel about things. I will literally think about it and I'll commit to it on the podcast because I'm like, this is what I stand for. This is what I believe in. I like this. I don't like this. And what being true to yourself will allow you to do the podcast every single week. You're not putting on like a radio presenter voice. Hey guys, come back after the break. You're yourself because you have to be able to sustain this over time and people will see through something that's not real. So be as authentic and as open and as honest as you can possibly be. And it will, it will be very, very important to the overall success of your pod. The secret sauce. I've kind of given it away throughout the presentation. If you've been listening, consistency over time with passion is success. And that's probably true of everything. It's true of every kind of business I've had or everything I've been involved in. Being consistent over a long period of time will lead to success in content creation and especially podcasting. I have only had a tiny little measure of success, but I can see how it can extrapolate over time. I can see how the more I double down and the more I commit to doing the podcast, being consistent, being open, being honest, and being genuinely curious, the more people relate to it, the more people are like, yes, I love this podcast. It makes such a difference. And along the way, you will get little rewards as people message you and go, look, your podcast made a huge difference to me, made a huge impact to me, and that will keep you going. So just think about this little formula. It's very simple, but it's often, it can be very disheartening. Content creation can be very personal and very disheartening. So think about this little formula, stick it up on your wall, and that'll keep you going when it's quite difficult. And that's it. I raced through that. We've finished just bang on time in 40 minutes. You can go and listen to the podcast. It wouldn't be good if I didn't plug my own podcast. You can go and listen to it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, my own website, anywhere. If you just Google my name or the Entrepreneur Experiment Podcast, you will get the podcast. So that's it. I will stop the screen share now and we'll have a chat with Amy. Brilliant, Gary. Thank you so much. That was a really clear and practical guide to podcasting. I'm sure everybody got a huge amount out of it. We do have some questions you'll be glad to hear. Um, there are loads here. Um, first one is, any thoughts on joining a podcast network? And the example given is Headstuff. Yeah, that's an interesting one, actually, and something I haven't considered um, because I didn't believe I was big enough, if I'm very honest. The barriers to entry are so low. I didn't really see also what the benefit of it would be to me. Collaboration can only be a good thing, to be honest. It's probably something, again, I probably overlooked. I probably would have continued down that path if I hadn't, if COVID hadn't happened and I hadn't kept going myself. But to be honest, the biggest thing when you're starting off is to be self-reliant, be reliant on yourself because you don't need, you know, you shouldn't need other people prompting you going to your podcast, to your podcast. But from what I've heard, it does have an overall benefit. If you're, you know, I do with other entrepreneurs in terms of we both kind of, we all share our own stuff and I've kind of created my own informal network. So I haven't direct experience of it, so I can't give a, a definite answer, but any collaboration or anything that, that brings your audience, brings you to more people can only be a good thing. Great. And this one, next one is from Francis. Hello, Francis. We have run two sessions of weekly podcast series, but are looking to move towards a more sporadic special edition episode model. Is this possible or is regularity the key? Now you did touch on that quite a bit. So I think I can anticipate your answer on this. Yeah, um, Francis, it is possible, but you'll have to have a huge reach. And what I would say is if you are going to be sporadic, how are you going to tell people it's back? That would be the biggest thing I would think of because I know myself, like, I'm like, oh, I must listen to that podcast. And then it just slips my mind. And I'm like, oh God, I forgot to listen to the podcast. So if you are going to go sporadic, I would say you will need some sort of direct method to reach your audience that you've already created. 
with the podcast, I touch on this, it can be a little bit difficult because you don't generally know who's listening. It's not like an, an email newsletter or it's not like a YouTube channel where people have subscribed. People have subscribed to me, but I don't exactly know who they are. So if you are going sporadic, just make sure you have a way of reaching those people. Another one, um, Gary from Sarah. Any issues with contracts or legal docs and sign-offs in relation to when interviewing? Um, and also, how do you create or earn an income stream? So two, two good questions there. Two good questions. I leave the response. Touch wood, I've never had a problem with that yet. So please don't sue me. Um, <laughs> if I give people comfort, I say, before we start, this is not live. This is not that kind of podcast to catch you out. I am here to give you a platform and to have a conversation and to learn from you. I'm not here. I don't give a damn what your 2019 accounting figures were. None of my business. Whatever you share, please share everything. Be as honest and transparent as you can. If there's something you say, and this has happened, if there's something you say that you're like, oh, can't say that, literally say that to me as we're chatting. Go, Gary, I actually could reveal XXX customer, blah, 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 blah. And I will say, great, this is going to be edited out. And I'll make a note to the editor as we're talking. And they get full comfort and transparency. It's only ever happened twice. One guy didn't want to offend his mother. And one guy mm -hmm. didn't want to offend his biggest customer. So this only happened twice. It's all about how you approach it. It's all about how comfortable you are. Earning an income stream. You're not going to be a millionaire unless you're Joe Rogan or Tim Ferriss. It is possible to earn income from it. Um, I've literally only started working with a sponsor now. Um, but it will take a while. It is possible. Um, you can start spin off. Um, I've seen other content creators start spin off enterprises from it. I wouldn't be looking to make it your income in a less than two years. So I'd say do it because you enjoy doing it. Don't say, don't be reliant going, I have to earn money from this very quickly. It can happen, but in Ireland, we are reaching a smaller audience. Just on the sign off piece, do you uh, let your um, participants, your interviewees, um, listen to the podcast before you publish? No, I don't, okay. unless there's an issue because no one likes the sound of their own voice. I mean, been very honest with you. And it, it, it's just a bad time. It's, it's, it's not efficient in terms of the workflow for me. Sure. This is, yeah, I'm not a full time person doing this. This is something mm -hmm. I do because I'm very interested in it, but it, I, it, I wouldn't have the bandwidth. Um, and it also, I think it would stunt the conversation. I think people, because people are always overanalyzed then. So I don't, as a rule, if someone is very uncomfortable, I'll be like, look, I'll send you over a rough draft, but I'd advise to leave it. Yeah. As you say, they've probably picked up on anything they were uncomfortable with already okay. in, in the moment. Yeah. Um, oh, a good one here. Any tips for the Spotify Apple algorithms? <laughs> I wish I knew. Yeah, I wish dollars. I knew. It, it the Apple one is bananas. It's been very honest with you. I cannot figure it out, and I've spent a lot of time. It is, it can fluctuate so wildly. You wouldn't want to be tying your emotions to the Apple algorithm because it can swing so wildly. Um, again, the only thing I've seen Spotify is more consistent. You do see Spotify. You do hang in there in the top probably 10, 15 all the time. Once you stick to a schedule, the Apple, you can literally go 60 or 70 places in a day. I've seen that happen. Um, again, consistency. I thought it was reviews for a while. I did a little blind test. I got a lot of reviews in a very short space of time and it didn't really make much difference. The only thing seems to be consistency, engagement, getting people to listen over time. If I'm very honest, I think it's very underdeveloped. I think they haven't focused enough on it. It's not like the YouTube algorithm, which is perfect. I think it's still very underdeveloped. I think it's a little bit hit and miss. This is also why I think it's a good time to get in. I'm going to go back to monetizing again a little bit. Um, a question on how many weekly listeners or how long do you recommend before you begin to think about monetizing? Well, I only did it last week and I'm two years in. So okay. um, that's just me. Uh, I waited too long, if I'm very honest, because I didn't have the confidence in myself and in the podcast to do it. That's just more my own failing than anything else. Um, it can vary. It's like anything, you know, when's the right time? There's, I've done partnerships in terms of I've, I've helped out smaller brands. They've just sent me some stuff and I've helped them out. Um, 
it would depend on what you're doing. I think, Eileen, to be honest, in terms mm. of what's your topic, what are you talking about? Um, and what's the value? Like what value are you giving to that advertiser? For me, it was very, very, very important that I knew I could over deliver. I knew that I could bring someone on and then drive engagement and traffic because my audience trusts me implicitly now because they know I'm not shilling stuff every day, every week to them. Oh, sign up to this offer, 10% mm-hmm. fox off. You know, they know and trust you. And I think build that first before a monetization. If you're looking purely to go down the monetization route, I'd probably look at YouTube or another medium or Instagram. Yeah. And as you say, what's big to one brand might be small to another. You know, it, it really would depend on, exactly. on nature of the partnership. Um, we have more questions on the once a week type question, which I think I think you've more or less answered um, that consistency. Yeah, but actually consistency could be not once a week, it could be once a month. Any any um comments on that kind of frequency rather than consistency yeah frequency yeah look it could be fortnightly it could be monthly just bear in mind that will lead to a slower rise um that will lead to a slower incline in terms of your it also depends on your name do you know what i mean if you have a yeah. big name you go into podcasting you're going to turn it on straight away and you're going to bring all those listeners over from instagram or youtube or wherever you're bringing them from for someone like me you know starting from scratch you need to build that trust over a long period of time. And I, I believe the best way to do that was weekly and then twice weekly. And I've seen the res- results in that quite quickly then. So yeah, the biggest thing is pick something you can stick to, whether that is fortnightly or monthly, it's better than not doing it at all. I'm going to ask a question my, of my own, something that interests me that you said quite earlier on. You, you had one podcast where you talked about the worst year of your life. And I'm just interested in the idea of, exposing vulnerability and the the role of empathy in these in in creating the listenership and I was reminded of Elizabeth Day's podcast how to fail which is really all about showing your vulnerability do you think that the nature of the content um is as important as more of some of the more technical and I suppose um process type uh, methods that you use like the consistency like the quality of the sound and so on do you think there's a little bit of magic in the 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 nature of the content and even if you don't mind me saying so the nature of the host who's willing to uh, expose themselves a little bit in that way yeah once you meet the barrier so let's say the barrier is 20 percent in terms of audio quality i can understand it it's pretty clear the rest is 80 percent the host and the connection it's the story like I have done 116 like I said and that one was by far the one I got the most messages about mm. like I'd say maybe 100 to 150 messages I felt like that myself that's how I felt I never talked about this before um I thought that was just me um I'm very glad you talked about this you know so that connection um, and you can't overdo that either. I think I blend both. I try to be as honest and open as I can so that people get to know me over a long period of time. But I think you have to have a blend of both. You have to have that aut- authenticity and that connection. And once you build it over time, you can then reveal more of yourself because you also have to be careful that, you know, people are listening for various different reasons. You know, for me, I think a lot of it is inspiration. It's extremely positive. I I lean towards the positive. It is not a negative podcast at all. There's enough negativity in the world and I deliberately avoid news, current events, all that kind of stuff. We talk about it, but we talk about it in a way that's related to the person and their story. They're all story-based. They're all narrative-based. And that's what I talk about exclusively. And that connection comes from that story and that authenticity. So I touched on it towards the end, but you, for me, you have to be open and you have to be honest because otherwise it's too difficult for yourself. You're, you're literally sitting down and you're, you're almost lying to yourself. And I've talked about feeling like a fraud on the podcast as well. You feel, well, who am I to talk about this? So you just have to keep that. I, I approach them all from a curious beginner mindset from someone I know a little, not a lot. Um, so I think that's important as well. It helps people. I put myself always from that mindset of the listener. What's the listener thinking? What are, what are they here to learn? Great. It's a really interesting side of it. Um, 
I think this is a very of the moment one. Any tips for promoting a podcast on TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> I have so many good friends of mine who are big on TikTok. I'll put it like that. And they're like, oh, Gary, have to be on TikTok. <laughs> have to be. <laughs> I have a clue. Being honest, stay in your lane. Um, I don't know. <laughs> It's usually popular and I, I can't get my head around it. I know I need to be there, but it's one of those things. I only go into something when I know, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is the path because it's so quick, like literally seven seconds to laugh or, you know, seven seconds to, to smile or seven seconds to think about it. That's it. And for a podcast, for me to distill that down, I haven't figured that out yet. If someone knows, DM me. Right, I say there's lots of people in the audience who could give you a few tips. Um, another interesting one, um, how do you stay motivated when you feel like you're hitting a slump? Because we did talk about this, you know, the consistency and for you it's weekly, so it's quite the commitment. So yeah. any, any tips around that? That's a real interesting question. And I've really struggled with that over the last year because as my own business struggled, I found, my God, like how can I, have this conversation with someone now on Wednesday morning. I might have had a really bad conversation with a customer. I'm like, right, how do you get into the mindset of like, oh, hello? And to be honest, for me, it's always when I get chatting to the person that instantly is gone because I'm like, oh, wow, this is such a good story. But again, that goes way back to slide one or two. I'm curious about it. I'm interested in it. I just get so much from it. And ironically, they give me that motivation then back because I'm suddenly I come off the call and I'm like, right, okay things aren't as bad as they could be. The podcast has actually kept me going through lockdown as opposed to, um, as opposed to being the opposite. You know, I, I, sometimes I feel it's a grind, but then, you know, little, little things happen. It's funny, like little interactions happen. Like someone might send me a message going, oh, your podcast um, hap, um, has helped me start a business. Like someone messaged me on LinkedIn on Monday morning going, after binge listening to your podcast all weekend, I started my business today. Wow. Like that's incredible. Like that's, 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 <laughs> And it blows my mind. I can't really get my head around it yet, but that, that sort of stuff is like brilliant. Do you know what? Yeah. If one person gets a year, gets enough from it to start a business, that's brilliant. You know, and I think just, just pick something you would do for free forever. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. Here's a good one as well for this particular moment. Recommendations for tools for recording podcasts remotely. What we're on right now, Zoom, I've tried a yeah. few. Um, and it's tricky because no matter what you do, the front doorbell will ring or the internet will buffer. You just have to be relaxed with that. You kind of have to go. I literally did a interview for someone else last week. They're like, will you interview this person? And it was a very high profile Irish American, very high net worth. And I was like, oh my God, this better go well. But you know what? They were in the exact same. He, he was sitting there in his apartment in America and he was like, oh, Oh, this the shine on the screen. I can't get it off. You know, so everyone has more willingness and forgiveness for how things things don't have to be perfect anymore. So go with the best option for you that it just allows you to do it. Look, Zoom seems to be, it seems to do the job nine out of times out of 10. Um, just make sure that you have a controllable environment. So mine a simple thing having carpet on your floor make sure that the noise isn't echoing around make sure the blind is closed to my left now so the sun isn't coming in and out and in and out and that the sound is somewhat controllable control the controllables but don't panic if something goes wrong sure and another one on the art side any tips for creating artwork for your podcast i was very original I used my second name and a fox head. So <laughs> <laughs> that was very simple. I, I just picked picked my own logo and, and it, it, it worked. And uh, make sure um, you can see it behind me. Have something that's very, you can see the logo here because that's all you're going to see is that tiny little, little square. So if you're playing that on a phone, just make sure it's very visual so that you can recognize that instantly because people's, people are flicking through the podcast recommendation charts and they're like, oh, 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 what is it? And either use your own face because people respond to human faces really well or use a very simple logo. Um, that'd be what I would, don't overcomplicate it is, is the summary of it. Uh, yeah, keep it simple, very good. And 
Uh, another technical question here. How important is SEO? Do you optimize for digital assistance like Alexa, for example? I don't. And that's something I was interested in, but that's one of those things that I've described as a one or two percenter. That's something that is great when you're smashing a podcast every single week and it's as good as you can make it. I put it up my own website. We try to do show notes. We try optimize for the person's name and their business name. But outside of that, I don't because my focus is because, again, it's not a full time job. My focus is entirely on how good is this episode? Is this episode doing what it should? And then once you've that nailed, you can focus on all the rest of the stuff. Okay. Another interesting one. Um, would you mind sharing your thoughts on video podcasts that are being uploaded on YouTube? Uh, which platform would you suggest to record those videos um, where you have to interview a guest? So it's, I suppose it's that crossover really between video yeah. interview and podcast. That's where I want to get to, to be honest. That's my goal mm. this year. That was where I was shaping up to get to this time, this time last year, more or less. Before COVID, I was setting up a little video studio in Temple Bar. And obviously we had to go back to Zoom. And I tried recording a couple of them on Zoom. They're not great. The quality is doesn't add very much. It's something I do want to do. I think it's something that would greatly benefit my own podcast in terms of reach. I think it's also quite an engaging medium. And if you can see the facial expressions, you know, if it's there, I'll watch it. If there's a video version of a podcast, I'll watch it. I'll, I have two screens here that I work in front of. I might have one podcast on and the other. Um, and I think it's definitely good if you can set it up, but again, don't let it distract you from the value of the podcast. I'd rather last week I actually had said, right, this is the week we're starting. And I went to video and interviewed someone and the office was awful. It was full of like files and full of like this horrible stuff. And I was like, oh, we can't do it here. We cannot do, we cannot video here. So I just focus on the audio. So for me, it's audio first, always. And then when I have all that thing perfected, it's like the SEO answer. When I have all that perfected, then I'll move into the video. I definitely think if you can, do. Great. Here's an, a good one as well. Um, any general tips for being a great interviewer? <laughs> I'll tell you when I crack it. I'll tell you when I become a great interviewer. Someone asked me that and they're like, oh, will you, will you speak to our uh, our team about your interview style? And I was like, um, yeah, I'll just have to figure out what it is first. <laughs> And I had to go back and think about it. I, I think it's curiosity, um, okay. not to be flippant about it. I think it's curiosity. I am curious about that person. Um, a little secret is I actually don't do very much prep. I don't have a big list of questions because I think that's so forced. And I think it's so radio. It's so kind of like, okay, back after the break, we're going to talk about these five things. And you crowbar the five things in and it just doesn't sound natural. We go wherever the podcast goes. We go with the conversation. And the biggest thing is to be relaxed. Now have a couple of what I would call parachute questions, whereby if the person just freezes, you can take them down back into the route again. So I always have a couple of things at the back of my mind that I can go to, but the biggest thing is to be curious. And it's the, one of the very first slides I said, you know, what would you talk to me about for half an hour about a coffee, something that you're not stretching, something that you're not sweating. It's like doing a presentation in college, you were rote learning it and you're like, oh, I better get this right. Cause slide three is important. You know, we, we all know that feeling of that preparation and then you over-prepare and then you freeze. So just do everything you can to be relaxed and to be curious. And if you can do that, like it, it'll go well. I'm great one-to-one -one in terms of a big group of people. I, I couldn't contribute in a massive big group conversation. It's just finding the style and, and just what's natural to you. Don't be something you're not. Great. Look, I have so enjoyed the session myself, Gary. Uh, that was invaluable, I think, for everyone listening. So my only final job is to thank you for your contribution. It's been absolutely fantastic. We haven't even got to all the questions. So thank you to everyone who was so uh, open and willing in their participation with the questions that really made the session, I think. So a real uh, appreciation of the audience as well. Uh, the next session is at 11.45. Um, it's the Ask Me Anything SEO panel. So maybe take yourself a little 15 minute break and coffee and then come back and join us for that one. Gary, thanks again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Eileen. Thank you. <laughs>